What yeast do we use in mead? What yeast do we use for cider? What yeast do we use in beer? And what is my favorite yeast? Today we're going to tell you all about our yeast. So what is yeast? Well, Wikipedia says yeast are single-celled microorganisms classified as members of the fungus kingdom. The first yeast originated hundreds of millions of years ago and at least 1,500 species are currently recognized. They are estimated to constitute 1% of all described fungal species. You skipped a word. No, I did not. What word is it? What are you talking about? Say it. I don't know what you're talking about. Say the about. word. Yeast are a, uh, oh my gosh, it's locked now. They're, eu <laughs> they're eucalyptic. It's not eucalyptic, it's eu eu eucalyptic or something like that. Anyway, even though all yeasts are not created equally. The yeast is still yeast. Yeast are living, breathing organism. And as such, it can sometimes be hard to predict their behavior. Much like humans, you can't outline or define how yeast are going to act or react. Even though a specific yeast strain may have an alcohol tolerance of 14%, sometimes they may crop out before that at 12. Oftentimes it can be pushed far beyond that. Jucaratus. You carry eukaryotic. It's, it's not eucalyptus. Ju it's Greek. There's no J in it. That's how the pronunciation is. Uh, okay. Anyway, yeast often need nutrients to ferment optimally. If you're shooting for a low gravity, low alcohol, whatever, you can usually just front load all of your nutrients. If you're going for a higher gravity or higher alcohol stuff, you often need to adhere to a more complicated system of staggered nutrients, a staggered nutrient schedule. So starting out, we have bread yeast. Fleshman's, I'll say only one thing about Fleshman's. We know a mead that you can make with this stuff. Don't use it. This is for bread and Joe's ancient orange mead. Don't use it for anything else. Then we got saf cider. I make lots of cider, often dry cider. It's a very simple recipe. I'll put a link to that video here. And I always use one yeast, saf cider. I find saf cider does a really good job of bringing forward the apple flavor. Is it made with apples? It is not made with apples. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find a home brewer who doesn't make beer. There are so many different strains of beer yeast out there. I only ever use one. I'm a simple man at heart. Safael US 05. I use it for my IPAs, for my pale ales, for my stout. If I'm making beer nine times out of 10, well, 10 times out of 10, I'm always using Safael US 05. But beer isn't my specialty. Mead is my specialty. And we have a variety of yeast for mead. We have a variety of yeasts for mead. The typically recommended yeast for mead is Lauvin D47. Now there's nothing wrong with Dalvin, with Dalvin, Lauvin D47, except recent experiences have found the D47 doesn't ferment very well in ambient room temperature. If you're going to use D47, you'll be just fine, but it's much more better if you have some sort of temperature control. You want to ferment cold with D47, less than room temperature. 60 degrees seems ideal. My replacement for D47 is QA23. QA23 is in all respects very similar to D47, except it ferments very well at ambient room temperature. And it has some beautiful, wonderful tropical notes. Pineapples, mangoes, it bring those flavors to mind. I'm actually planning on doing a pineapple cider soon. And I'm thinking of fermenting with QE23 simply because I want those tropical notes in there. That makes sense. Lavin 71 Are you gonna give me something to say? <laughs> yeah, tell us about Lavin 71 I don't know anything about Lavin, I need your you help. You want something to say, tell, tell us about Lavin. Direct your help. <laughs> Lavin 71B. 
is uh, sometimes synonymous with D47. Sort of like a D47 alternative. It's a wine yeast that people make wine with. I haven't used it all that much, so I can't really speak from experience. And last but not least. There's at least the ones we have. There's actually a few more. A recent storm has come through Texas, a winter storm, the coldest winter we've seen in many, many years. It kind of messed with our delivery system a little the bit. The roads were frozen, the powers were out, there was no water, and Amazon didn't deliver all the yeast they ordered. I give it a nice. Oh, uh, yeah, this is my favorite part. <laughs> oh, man. It's gone. Oh man, these <sighs> batteries. Here we go. Alright, yeah. Alright. Huh. Next on the list is supposed to be EC eleven eighteen the workhorse of the yeast varieties. EC1118 can ferment all the way to 18%, and you can push it beyond that to 20, 21, 22 sometimes. Shocking, I know. EC1118 is often used to restart stalled ferments. If your ferment stalls out, you can pitch a pack of EC1118, and sometimes that will restart your fermentation. Hmm. K1 V1116 is almost an alternative to EC1118. It's not quite the powerful, strong workhorse that EC1118 is, but it's close. So I got a question. Why don't you use the workhorse yeast on every mead? That's a good question. Because EC1118 can sometimes produce some very strong flavors that will age away with time. But I like my mead to be drinkable as soon as I'm done fermenting it. Ah. And for that, you need my favorite yeast. Which do you think it is? Y yeast 1388. It's a liquid yeast, not like these dry yeasts. And this yeast is the best yeast. I use that for all of my meads. I like to use Bray Denard's bomb recipes. Bray's one month mead, which allows your mead to go from pitch to bottle into your belly in one month and Y yeast 1388, along with a very specific schedule of nutrients, allows fermentation to be so optimal that there's almost no off flavors and your mead is good to drink as soon as it's done fermenting. Sometimes we don't even let it clear. Ferment, finished, bottle, keg, drink. Just like that. Y yeast 1388, the best yeast ever. Now we'll briefly mention starters. Starters when you take the yeast, hydrate it, and let it sit for a bit? No. With almost all dry yeasts, you want to rehydrate them. Pour it in some lukewarm water with some go firm, let it sit for 10-15 minutes to rehydrate it, and then pitch it. A starter is when you create an entire colony of yeast before you even pitch it. It takes two or three days. You almost always have to make a starter out of liquid yeast. And it's not really necessary with dry yeast, but it can be very, very helpful, especially in difficult to ferment musts. Before fermentation even begins, first the yeast have to build a healthy colony. This itty bitty packet of yeast contains 100 billion yeast cells. Now that may seem like a lot, but it takes 10 times that or more to ferment something. Remember that yeast cake in the bottom of your bucket? That is what this itty bitty packet becomes. It starts off just a little handful of yeast and grows into a huge colony, that giant yeast cake in your bucket. But what if you could pitch that entire colony into your must instead of this itty bitty packet? That's what a starter is for. A starter increases the cell count. So instead of pitching just a little itty bitty packet of yeast, you're pitching an entire colony that is already primed and ready to go. It's almost always recommended to use a starter with liquid yeast, but it's not usually necessary with dry yeast. 
I don't really know why. The directions for making the starter are on the back of the pack. But here's how I do it for me. First, you locate the smack pack. It'll be a little, it'll feel different inside there. Find it, place it in the palm of your hand, and smack! You'll hear fuzzing and bibbling and stuff inside there. Bibbling, bubbling, fizzing and bubbling inside there. Mix it all up, give it a bit of a shake, and then set it down, leave it for uh, about two hours. And I'll cut here and see you again in two hours. Now our smack pack is activated, we're ready to make this. There's two ways to make this. Now I hesitate to say the cheap way and the expensive way, but there's a basic way and a, a better way. I'll show you both. I will start with the basic way. Grab your empty carboy, one gallon carboy. We're gonna fill it with 18 milliliters of water, milliliters of water, one half cup of honey, one tisp of go firm, and the uh, activate smack pack, the yeast smack pack. Now when you measure all this stuff, you don't have to be exact or precise. Yeast don't care about grams and milliliters and quarter tisps, just kind of eyeball it, you know? 18 milliliters is roughly three and a half regular size balls of water. So we're gonna put that in there. Okay, close enough. I'm only gonna add a half a cup of honey. I'm just gonna pour, I'm just gonna eyeball this. Roughly a half. Whenever you're eyeballing like this, it's better to put more than less. So I'm going to kind of overshoot, overestimate. Let's see how well I can eyeball a half a cup of honey. Then I'll get a sanitized hand and just shake this up. Let's go ahead and add our uh, one tisp of go firm. One tables, tables, teaspoon, what's a tisp, what's a teaspoon? One teaspoon of, uh, of go farm is about five grams. This is a 10 gram pack, so I'm gonna put about half a pack in there. Uh, that looks like about a tisp huh? Let's do some more shaky shaky, get all that mixed up. Okay, good enough. And we're going to add our yeast. Give it one more little swirl, get all that mixed. And then let that sit for two days, you're good to go. You do not want to put an airlock on top of this. You want to be constantly aerating it. You want to get oxygen in there all the time. <coughs> Yeast need oxygen to, to, to build, to grow that big colony. So the more oxygen you get, the better off you are. Put a paper towel over top and then put like a, that's too small. Let's put two together. And wrap it around. And then set this in a high traffic area in your house. Whenever you walk past it, grab it, give it a little, a little swirl and a shake. Try not to get it up on top of this little napkin up here. Just shake, swirl. Try to get that oxygen down inside there. And in two days, you'll have this massive, thriving yeast colony. Pitch that whole thing into your must. And you won't just be pitching an itty bitty packet of yeast, you'll be pitching an entire colony. Now that's the basic way. The not basic way is using a stir plate. This stirs things for you all the time, constantly. It's got maggots inside there. And you're gonna be using this flask and put this little metal plastic pill inside there, set it on top, Turn it on and do the little dials or whatever. And it's gonna spin this around really fast inside there and create a vortex. It's gonna be perpetually pulling the air down inside there and mixing it up. It's a wonderful way to create a starter and that will increase your cell count exponentially. Very, very good thing. So since I have one of these, 
all this has already been sanitized. Instead of using a carboy, I'm going to use the flask here. Let's just pour all that inside there. Drop your little metal plastic thing in there. Set on top of your deal. And turn it on. Turn. Oh, these have to be plugged in to work. Okay, so I'm gonna reframe and then show you how it works. Now, I'm not really sure why this happened like this, but my flask is bigger than my stir plates plate. So if you have the same situation, this isn't very sturdy or stable. So you're probably gonna wanna put that in a place where it's not gonna get bumped or jarred or whatever. I'm gonna put mine in the corner, way over there behind the coffee pot. Turn it on. And you don't wanna just on, I can go to the mask because it's just gonna fling that thing all over the place. So start, start from nothing. And, oh, okay, let it center itself in the middle. Let it get spinning. Now, unfortunately, we can't see this because the, uh, the starter is cloudy and stuff, but it's right there in the middle. It's spinning, spinning, spinning. I should have probably showed you that. Spin it faster. And faster. Now we're gonna let that sit for a little bit, and here in just a moment, I might go a little faster with it. And here in just a moment, it's going to begin, it's gonna create a vortex inside there. It's all gonna spin around, have like a little tornado inside, and that's gonna constantly suck air down into that and mix it all up. Okay, out of all these yeasts, which is your favorite and why? Except for that one. <laughs> Thank you for watching Mead with Eric and Derek. We hope you have as much fun watching as we had making this. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified each time we upload. And join the Discord when more than a thousand mead makers are always there to help you make better mead. See, See you next time. time.